How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So Cool Monster has really stepped up their game to do some really nice gaming mites, but it's also still quite affordable. However, one area where I still think they're trailing a bit behind some of the competition is in the wireless department. Well, recently they released their new MM831 mouse that does look great as you guys can see, has a ton of features and is still quite affordable for everything that you get. Now, starting off with our pricing, the 8301 is currently retailing for around $80 on Amazon, which isn't too bad, or around 1,300 Rand for here in South Africa. Now, that does put it up against quite a few other wireless gaming mice in the same price range with some of their own features that makes them stand out. But now, let's go over the 8031 and see why this might be the option for you. But before that, here at WeDo Tech, we we always need a fast, a small storage and transcend delivered with the ESD 250C being a 960 gigs equipped with a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port. You will reach read speeds up to 520 megabytes a second and writes up to 460 megabytes a second. Not only is it a fast, but you can also use it for your console or your mobile phone. This is a great external SSD that can almost fit inside your wallet even. But if you don't have any open USB port to plug it into, Transcend has you covered with that as well with their lightweight 6 in 1 USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 Hub 5C featuring a micro SD and a UHS 2 SD card slot, two USB Type-A ports, a USB Type-C port and also a Type-C with a 60 watt power delivery so you can connect your laptop manufacturer's charge to the port as well. So check out the link in the video description if you want to get either the Hub 5C or the ESD 250C linked in the description below. Now take a look at the design. The 831 has a more longer, slimmer shape, which does feel quite comfortable in my hand. But now because of the larger and longer shape, I do feel that a palm style grip is going to work best for the 831. Me personally, I do have more of a medium size hand. And if you do have larger hands as well, I think this will still work very well for you in more of a palm style grip. But of course, of the other grip, will work as well depending on what's more comfortable for you. Now as for the body it does have a matte black coating and is made out of a premium PBT plastic that does have more of a rougher finish texture on it for increased grip. The 8301 does have these grooves all along the side of the body which does kind of look like a dragon scale to me personally and especially if you do look at the RGB as well going all around the side it just adds more to that image. Now, I've got a bit of a fantasy mind going on, but it does look quite cool for me. Now, you don't have to worry because it doesn't really affect your finger placement or any comfort wise. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to worry about that because that usually is an issue that uh, some people might have. But for me personally, I didn't experience any problems out there. Now, you are actually able to pop off the back scale here to reveal a extremely bright LED right there is actually blindingly bright but you also then get your caddy for the usb wireless receiver which i have currently in the pc right now but you can pop that off and keep it nice and secure and then also just pop up pop back the magnetic palm rest and it's a nice and secure it's not going to go anywhere now as for the lighting you do get four lighting zones the extremely long LED zone right here around the side of the mouse. You do have the Cool Monster logo here on the palm rest, again with that extremely bright LED. You have the DPI LEDs right here and also of course the scroll wheel. And I have to say, everything does fit in really nicely and it does make the design stand out a bit more for me personally. Again, a bit of a dragon style look. For me personally, I don't know about you guys. Now, unlike some of the Cool Monsters, other mice which were aimed to be more lightweight, super light with all the cutouts and everything, like the MM711 and the MM720, the 831 is a bit heavier 
quite a bit at 123 grams one two three which is pretty heavy now me personally i do like a mouse sub 100 grams but you still get a plenty of features with the 831 and it kind of makes the extra weight worth it now it is just going to depend up to again what you personally like my editor ron usually likes lighter mice but he actually used this one for quite a while and he actually really really liked it so you can adapt if you want it to. <laughs> now moving into the front of the mouse, just like always, you do get your Omrom switches. Hopefully I don't click in any of the wrong places, which does have a 20 million click life cycle. From my use, they were very snappy and I had no problems at all with a travel distance delay or, or missed clicks or anything like that. It was pretty nice. Now the scroll wheel I found was actually really silent and it has nice soft steps. You can honestly, you can't really even hear that. It's really nice. Now I did find that the rubber grip was a bit too thin for me it's not really a big issue or anything still had plenty of a grip but it's you it's a bit thinner than what i'm currently used to and then of course on this side you do have all of your rgb goodness that you can adjust now then moving just behind the scroll wheel you do have your dpi led indicators which also rgb and then also your dpi selection switch you do get a five customizable levels ranging from a 200 all the way up to 32,000 in 100 dpi increments each level does have its own color which you can't unfortunately adjust but it does let you know on what level you are on so just memorize the colors and unfortunately the colors are fixed together where you don't have them individually lighting up or depending on the level let's say three levels or so on it's fix all of them together now moving on to the left side you do get two very smooth thumb buttons that do stand out a bit more than others you can actually feel them if you do just place your thumb on the side here so it's going to depend up to if you like it or not as for some it might be a bit of a hindrance it didn't bother me personally that much but I do like it if it's a bit more flush they do also have a quite a long and mushy prices so they do travel quite a bit again nothing too crazy or a deal breaker or anything but I just want to let you guys know and see if you like it or not now I did however really like the rubber grip on the side that they used it doesn't have any textures on it it's just a plain a rubber a grip there but it does a really good uh, job and i did find it quite useful now moving on to the uh, right uh, side you do get a slight curve towards uh, the uh, back and then for me personally i have plenty of space for my pinky and ring finger to rest it uh, easily now i did find that if you place your hand a bit more forward uh, your fingers a bit more forward you uh, might start to touch uh, the open groove here on uh, the front depending again how you place your fingers or rest your fingers on the side of the mouse and that could be a bit of a hindrance again not for me personally i had a plenty of space resting my ring finger more towards the front or bottom and my pinky more towards the back so it's just going to depend how you personally rest your fingers but there's also no grips here it's just the textured plastic same as the rest of the mouse now, when flipping the mouse around, you do get the Pixart PAW3335 optical sensor. And this is actually the first time that I'm using this sensor. Usually, I'm using the PMW sensors. But now, the 3335 seems to be aimed for more wireless mice with lower powering sensors. So, it kind of sits between the PMW3360 and 3389 sensors sensors in specs but again a lower power to great for wireless gaming mice so you still get a great sensor with a max dpi of 32,000, 400 ips and up to 1000 
hertz paladin great nothing too crazy like the 8000 hertz that we have seen before which is just overkill honestly now along with the sensor you do get a three glide pads one at the top and then a two at the bottom that does deliver a nice a smooth a glide cool monster usually is a great with a glider pad uh, very smooth usually but now uh, finally uh, let's get into the uh, main uh, feature of the 8301 and that is uh, the connectivity options so unlike the majority of wireless uh, gaming might the 8301 actually get uh, three uh, different connection options you can either run it in uh, the uh, standard wired mode which Apparently is a feature because some wireless gaming mice doesn't really have that as an option. So it is a feature apparently, but you do also again have the standard 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. And then you also do get a Bluetooth version 4.2 which is super handy if you want to connect it to multiple devices like i actually do i've got my laptop here i've got my pc here uh, and i can connect it to uh, another pc if i really wanted to so it's really handy for all of those uh, different connections and still keep it wireless now if you are still a skeptic on wireless mice for gaming actually the 831 will be a great mouse to help you change your mind now i'm not a pro gamer or anything but from all of my heroes actually reviewing a mice i can't really spot the difference or noticeable a difference between a wired and a 2.4 gigahertz wireless it's the same with the 831 it's the same with some of the other wireless mice that i have recently reviewed as well in the last two years or so the technology is so good these days that there's honestly no real real reason not to, to switch from my personal time and then also my editor's time using the 831 we didn't notice any sensor issues like a jittering or sensor rollout or anything like that so far it's just a very good sensor and we didn't have any troubles gaming or just day-to-day -day use with uh, the uh, mouse and that's usually the case with uh, the newer sensors they usually don't have any problems uh, anymore so yeah just a uh, good all around now switching uh, modes is also very easy all you have to do is look at the bottom and then switch uh, the uh, slider here at uh, the middle between uh, the bluetooth wired which i'm not currently at or wireless and you do also have your pairing a button here if you wanted to connect it to the usb wireless receiver which we did need to do um, at first so you do have that now if you wanted to run it in a bluetooth mode just keep in mind that it is running at a much lower um, lower bandwidth rate so polling rate is only going to be at 125 hertz but that's only not that big of an issue and of course you're not going to game with that as well because it does have a slight uh, quite a bit more a dla so for casual gaming you can do that but for anything more than that just rather use it in a wired or wireless mode but for everyday use or day-to-day -day office use the bluetooth is going to work perfectly for that again i'm using it on my laptop now really the only problem that most wireless mice have these days is just the battery life and the 831 does have an 800 milliamp hour battery which isn't too amazing it kind of lasts around 14 hours of average use on the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode with the rgb on it does turn off after a while but that's kind of how long it lasts now if you wanted to run it in a bluetooth mode then it lasts a bit longer a couple of hours roughly around a 20 a four but still nothing too amazing so you will need to charge this mouse pretty much every day to be able to use it now of course you can still use it in the wired mode while it is charging with the included type c cable a nice cable there and that will take around three hours to fully charge not too long for an additional like 14 hours or if you wanted to make your life even easier the 831 also features qi wireless charging so if you do have a qi wireless charging a pad you can just rest your mouse just pretend there's one right here you just rest your mouse on top of that and that's going to handle all of the charging and all of the effort for you now it is going to charge quite a bit as slow it's going to take around twice as long but if you just want to put it there when you're not using it it's out of the way and that's all you need to do and it's going to be charged 
all the time so that is actually really handy uh, and we did actually use it my editor uh, used it quite a bit now one issue that we kind of had is that it would have been a nice if there was a some sort of a battery indicator on the uh, mouse maybe with the rgb here at the top or, or something just to let us know what the battery level is at because it also doesn't let us know inside of the software all you really get is that the rgb does go off if the battery does fall below 30 percent and the dpi indicators does flash a rate at 15 percent battery life and then all of the lights goes off at around five percent so that's probably some sort of indicator to let you know what the battery level is on but more would have been a bit better honestly then just a lastly for the master plus plus a software here you can change and adjust all of the sensor settings like the dpi the polling rate the lift of a distance the angle snapping and just a few more you can create your own custom macros and then also assign different commands to six of the buttons except for the left front one the main one of course then we won't be able to do anything as for the wireless controls you can set the sleep timer either from like five minutes all the way to around 40 minutes i believe and then also the brightness of the RGB when in a wireless mode. Now as for the RGB, you do get 13 preset effects that you can assign to or you can create your own static combos for all of the LEDs inside the mouse, which is quite a few. Now keep in mind that if you want to adjust anything in the software, you will need to run it in a wired mode. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in a wireless mode. So that's the only thing. So then in conclusion, the MM831 is a very nice wireless gaming mouse with a ton of features and not at a bad price as well. Now, again, there are some other mice in the same price range and does have very similar features, uh, but uh, for what I believe to be Cooler Monsters a first proper high-end gaming wireless mouse it's definitely not a bad and definitely worth taking a look at if you are in the market for a wireless heavier gaming mice now it's also not without some issues the first time that we connected the mouse wirelessly it didn't want to connect properly we had to remove the dongle and then put it back for the mouse to actually connect and this did happen quite a few times which was a bit annoying when I also had it on a wireless charging over a night and came back the next day it was also again disconnected and we had to do all of that again also when the mouse does go into a sleep mode you have to press the left mouse button to wake it back up again and then it might sometimes actually click on the whatever you have open on your desktop as well and it doesn't work with the scroll wheel otherwise that would be a nice so um, and there's a bit of a delay once it's waking up you can't just move it around to wake it up like some other mice so that's the only thing uh, but small issues like that definitely not a deal breaker and overall the mm831 is a proper wireless gaming mouse that i can definitely recommend so if you guys want to get it for yourself i will leave links in the video description a big thanks to cooler monsters of africa for sending in the mouse over a full review if you guys enjoyed the video please like share recover and comment like always and i will check all of you next time cheers guys